for bracing for a deck, it's all done using NZS3604, but understanding the building code is actually really quite hard for this one. So this, the aim of this video here is really to make it as clear as possible to understand how bracing is actually achieved for a deck using NZS3604. This video is one of many on the Robo Deck Designer YouTube channel. But I'm Paul and this YouTube channel here is all about helping you. Helping you navigate the difficult New Zealand building code regulations. I will let you know about little known clauses and design considerations that can prevent you from making mistakes and getting it right first time. But the greatest gift I can give you is the Robo Deck Designer online tool. This online tool will help you design your deck to New Zealand building code regulations within minutes. So for the bracing for a deck, this really applies for decks which extend more than two metres away from the side of a house. And also, if your deck is more than three metres above the ground, then specific engineering design rules apply. So this video doesn't really apply to decks more than three metres above the ground. Okay, to start understanding the bracing for a deck, you need a copy of NZS 3604. Now this can be downloaded from a link on the Robo Deck Designer website. Under NZS 3604 there's a clause 7.4.2.2. Now this has got a little bit of information about timber decks and this refers to the bracing under table 5.8. Now for this table here we use um, a light roof and light cladding in terms of the table but because obviously a deck doesn't have a roof that's just the closest one we can actually use in it. So I've got this up here in the video and it works out at 15 bracing units or BUs for short. Now for bracing for a deck or even a house there's two types of bracing there's earthquake bracing and there's wind bracing but for a deck, we don't need to worry about wind bracing because the earthquake bracing is always going to be higher so you don't need to calculate the wind bracing. Also under clause 7.4.2.2 there's a part there which states that the bracing for a deck needs to be half the values of that actually in the table. So also at the bottom of the table 5 point, there's a multiplication factor for the earthquake zone and the soil class. Now, for the earthquake zone in NZS 3604, there's two large maps of New Zealand for the North Island and the South Island under figure 5.4. So that really shows just where the earthquake zone is. And you use this at the bottom of the table 5.8, where you also work out the soil class and from here you can actually get a multiplication factor. With these multiplication factors we can put them both together and work out the bracing required per square metre. For this video I'm using an example of a deck which is 7.5 metres by 3.6 metres located in Wellington and a soil class of soft or very deep. With these two factors this gives us a combined bracing value of 7.5 bracing units per meter squared. With a deck measuring 7.5 meters by 3.6 meters, this gives us a combined value of 202.5 bracing units for the entire deck. Now to distribute this bracing, the bracing is required in both directions which is perpendicular to each other. Now to work out the distribution for this bracing in both directions, this is done using NZS 3604 under clause 5.5.2. Now, this needs to be calculated in both directions, the across and the long direction. Now, it's easier just looking at the graphics on this video to be able to understand this the clearest. Now, to achieve this bracing here, this is actually done using braced or anchor piles. So, you can see the diff two different types of bracing in this video on the screen. Both anchor piles and brace piles have a value of 120 bracing units. Now for this deck here we have a requirement of 112.5 bracing units which would mean just like one brace pile or one anchor pile in both directions. But also under NZS 3604 under clause 5.5.2 there's a requirement there that bracing lines need to be at least 5 metres apart. Now, the only way you can really achieve this with a deck of this size here is actually having three of them. You can't have two because 7.5 metres long is greater than 5 metres. So, if you just look at the example here up on the 
the graphic on this video, you can see how I've actually achieved this. In this example here, we've actually exceeded this. Um, there's nothing wrong with exceeding it. It's just, but this also needs to meet the requirements of the bracing lines being more than five meters apart. Now, understanding bracing for a deck is admittedly quite complicated, but there's an easy way of actually going about it. On the Robo Deck Designer website, there's a bracing calculator there which you can just enter in your length, your width of the deck, your earthquake zone, which um, is anything from between one and four, and the type of soil that you're building your deck on. And you can easily work out the bracing required there. The whole bracing calculator there shows you how much is required and how this can actually be achieved. So you'll see the link here in the video, how to actually get to that calculator. Also, the decks designed using Robo Deck Designer, all the bracing is actually calculated in the designs as you go along with the design process. I really hope this video has been helpful for you, and please don't forget to sub subscribe to the Robo Deck Designer YouTube channel, and we'll see you in the next video anyway. Thanks.